Today we're in this amazing garden. It's Carol's garden. It's at one off gallery. It's the most amazing, refreshing garden that I have ever seen. Lush and the trees are enormous. And the beautiful thing about this place is she has a sculpture garden. So we're gonna have a look at this. And also she'll give us tips as to how she maintains the garden and how she actually thought about where to put things in her garden. So my name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. Every aspect of this garden is just so refreshing. Just standing here in the midst of these giant trees, oxygen, that's all I think about. I'd like to introduce you to the proprietor of One Off Gallery, Carol, and I wish to thank you, Carol, for oh, inviting us. Thank you so thank much you. for being with us, Alice. Yes, it's thank a real you pleasure. So much. Tell me something about your gallery and your sculpture garden. Oh, thanks, Alice. Yeah. Um, the gallery um, started in 1994, but has only actually been on this location for about 12 years. Yes. But it's open to the public. It's open daily except for Mondays. Okay. Um, we're open from 10 until 4.30. Okay. Um, the sculpture garden the same. Um, yeah. we, we love people to come and bring a book and a computer and a cup of coffee and, and really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So the main garden is the bit we're standing in here, which yeah. just kind of goes with our house and is the original garden that was, I guess, planted with the house. Yes. Um, we've tweaked it quite a lot since we moved in. Okay. But I think the base of it was actually in 1976 when the house was built. Mm -hmm. The sculpture garden is only two years old. It was okay. um, August 2019 that we planted it, so it's, it's really new. So do a lot of Kenyans buy sculptures? Sadly not, Alice. Um, a mystery because you'd think that sculptures would be really accessible, they're three-dimensional and really yeah. tactile, but no. They, uh, our biggest sales are probably in paintings, uh, oil paintings really okay. I would say are our biggest sales. So um, we decided that it would be interesting to offer sculptors a, a really lovely place to do outdoor sculpture. Yes. Um, I think maybe Kenyan sculptors aren't used to that. The, yes. the market has been very much indoor pieces of much smaller scale. Okay, yes. And we, we'd love to spread the word that mm. you know, we've got a space and that we're looking for really monumental pieces for yes. an outdoor space. Yeah. Uh, and we really think that it, 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 there's an opportunity there because um, obviously with the development in Nairobi um, it would be great to have um, public sculptures in, in yes. buildings and things and yes. there's actually nowhere that you can go and, and see that sort mm. of work and then you know kind of figure out whether that will work for you in a building yeah. and um, I think that that's something that's really important it, you know children in Europe grow up with lots of public sculpture yes, yes. and um, we haven't got that opportunity for our children yes. um, a, indeed a lot of people that's the only art education they have and I think it's really important to have art in your life and have it you know in a in an area where you can absorb it without having to empty your pocket of course of course and I love the way you've displayed them in your garden because once you display it and also give people the opportunity to see that you, you too can have a sculpture in your garden you don't necessarily have to have sculptures in the house but it becomes part of the garden you are so right because that's one of the um, the, the comments we get most is yes. oh you know all my walls are full yes. well hey but what you know what about what your, your garden, garden go you, for it yeah, yeah, you, yeah you know depending on the size yeah. of your garden yeah. it can it can take loads of sculptures yeah. Now tell me your inspiration. Oh, for doing the whole yeah, project, yeah. yeah. No, we've got a little group of colobus monkeys, a yeah. little family, and um, I spoke to the primate expert at Karura Forest, and I said to him, you know, with all the development, are yes. they going to survive? Yes. And he said, if you plant the right kind of vegetation for them, yes. they can survive on a very small piece of land. Yeah. So he said, my piece of land would easily support a huge colony. So he actually gave me a list of the trees and the shrubs that they would love to eat. Yes. And pretty much that's what we planted. We, we didn't plant too much um, in the tree 
uh, section mm -hmm. that um, a colobus wouldn't like. Yeah. Um, of course, we still got quite a few of the eucalyptus, which you know, are absolutely no, they they. Um, you know, koalas like those, and yeah. our, our guys don't like those yeah. at all. So, I, you know, that's a thought of whether I'm going to actually have the courage to get rid of my last eucalyptus. But basically, yeah, all of these um, indigenous trees are, are going to be colobus um, hangouts, I hope. My gosh, and look at this. Where did you get this idea? On the um, wall? This wall is actually ferro cement, so it's super oh. light. And you, it was actually assembled, my partner designed it. And it's, yes. it's, it's, two people can just pick up a panel. And he had the bright idea to put a little planter in the top. Oh. So we wanted something that would survive the drought. Yes. And uh, as you, you were saying, it was a, it's a succulent. Yes. And so it, it's super good in the drought. In the wet weather, it gets a bit unhappy and yeah. bits fall off. Um, but it's doing all right. Yeah, it's wonderful. I love it. How did you come up with this design? Actually, I, I pinched the idea off Pinterest. Oh, good. So, yeah. so somebody had that idea and I thought super way to use all those gum trees that, you uh -huh. know, nobody wants to buy for anything. And it's not good for building, it splits, it's, it's you know, it's too hard. Yeah. So, yeah, we chopped it very quickly because yeah. it goes really, really hard. Yeah. And then we dipped it in engine oil. Okay, to get the termites not eating it. Yeah, so the and, and then just it popped it down and, and so far so good. There, there's been a little bit of termite damage on the on the bark, yeah. but the actual core seems to have gone like a rock. It's so beautiful, it's I love that. Over here, our picnic table was again, you oh. know, the gum trees that were just some of the biggest um, trunks that we just split and have just used the whole piece so people can just get an idea. Such a great idea and look at the size of the table, it's amazing. Yeah. If people want to come for a picnic, can they do it? But not at the moment, but later. Um, yeah, I think if they booked it. They oh, could, they have to book? They would, yes. Okay. We, we allow people just to drop by and um, wander around with a computer or a book and a cup of coffee. Yeah. But um, if they want to actually use our picnic table, then they need to let they us know. Let you know. Yeah, we're just a little bit worried about um, things like chicken bones because we've got so many animals yeah. and we've had to do a few trips to the vet yeah. with that oh, issue, yeah, but yeah. yes. Yeah. And here we're standing in Carol's amazing hydrangea garden. Look at it, so beautiful. Tell me, how do you look after hydrangeas? I always get muddled about this. Oh, Alice, it's water. They just, yeah. they are such greedy drinkers, these guys. They um, need water just about every day. Yeah. And, and if we don't water them, they, the flowers seem to flop. So, yeah. And so during the warm weather, all the time water? All the time water. And I guess they take a lot of mulch. You know, we, we try and do yeah. a little bit of the wet mulching where we cut uh, you know, cuttings and, and, and put them around to try and keep the water in, but they still need the water. Yeah, they need Amazing. Tons of water. Do these just stay this colour or can you change the colour? They're you always. Can. That you need to add lime when they. Uh, so I, I, might be, I might be very wrong, but I think they're very pink yes. when um, the soil is more acid and I think they go more blue when you put a lot of alkaline here. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. But they're lovely, look at that, and such big balls, you know, very nice. And who's this amazing man here? The, um, the beautiful sculpture is Peter Ngugi, oh, and lovely. I think he's one of Kenya's real rising superstars. Nice. He's already sold incredibly well in, in France, and now he's got representation in New York, London, and in Johannesburg. Yeah. So I think he's going to do really well. But actually, he is primarily a painter and not oh. a sculptor, but he's done a fantastic job. He's done job a fantastic there. job, and I think he's, he looks really sort of comfortable standing there. Carol, tell me about this beautiful garden jewellery. Amazing. Um, it's the brainchild of Anselm Crows from Kittengella Hot Glass. Yeah. And it weighs an absolute ton. We had to get um, a, a, a fabulous um, tree climber, Harrison, yeah. Yeah. Um, who 
just shimmied up the tree and he pulled it up on a rope and that was it. And I thought, you know, it's going to take the whole day yeah. to get it up there. But lo and behold, we managed. Yeah, 30 minutes and, and then we put a, a, a really heavy, heavy duty chain on it to maybe hopefully secure it. It doesn't seem to swing much in the wind yeah. it's i think it's it's really it's quite heavy, heavy yeah. but the colors and oh it's beautiful yeah. beautiful beautiful So Carol, you were telling me about your vanilla plant. Oh my God, there it is. And it's flowering. Yes, I am very blessed with this vanilla plant. Um, this was given to me by the lovely um, Belgian ambassador. Uh -huh. And that was probably about four years ago, maybe even more. Um, but I think it's very happy here, but I've never had a vanilla pod. So I, uh, I think, yeah, we need to pollinate it, but um, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Very sure. And what is that at the side? Is that, that where the, the, pot, um, the flowers actually, come yes, from? Yes, flowers, um, oh, you know. Oh, as it drops? Uh, yes, as it grows longer and longer, they just fall off and it grows longer. Uh -huh. And this one's looking like it's, yeah, oh, yeah, it's got it's one little tiny, yeah. yeah. It's just starting to flower. And so. then what do you do with the pods once it gets the pods? You just dry them? I think or so, yeah. You just dry them? Yeah. Okay. And, and then and you get your vanilla. Yeah. Amazing. Um, really a great commodity. And I love it, what you've done down here. I mean, that's perfect because you've mulched it, you've got it for drainage, you've got some pebbles there, and it seems very happy. Seems to, yeah, seems yeah. to be working. Very, very that's happy. the inspiration of my gardener, actually. Yeah. I, I, I have to not take credit for that. But I will try it. <laughs> I think it's a great <laughs> system, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because it just keeps the humidity in and it's well drained. Beautiful yeah, plant. Super, super Lovely. Happy. So Carol, thank you so much really for inviting us to this beautiful garden of its paradise. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Oh Alice, it's been such a pleasure and we just really hope lots of other people come and that you come back many, many times. And I will, I will, I definitely will. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode. Please do come and visit the One Off Gallery in Roslyn in Nairobi. We're going to put all the contacts there below. We will give you the telephone number and the email address and do come and check their gallery. I mean, they've got amazing, amazing art and you can come and sit in the garden. Please do contact them. So don't forget to like and to share and also subscribe to my channel and also invite your friends and let them subscribe. We've got some interesting, interesting episodes coming up and don't forget to press the notification button so you'll always be informed when we upload a new episode. Thank you so much and have a lovely day.